I'm sure you've heard the expression, can't see the forest for the trees. The lessons we have read this morning for this fourth Sunday of Advent from the Hebrew Testament, book of Isaiah and the Gospel of Matthew provide a working example of that expression. The Gospel lesson is very familiar. It's the forest. We see the trees, we see the trees, we see the trees in that lesson of Joseph and the angel that appears in his dream and Joseph's resolve changing. And we're so familiar with those trees in that gospel lesson, we don't see the forest. And the forest really is the lesson and what it points back to, that passage from Isaiah chapter seven. The Isaiah lesson involves an event that occurred around 734 BC. As Suzette read, King Ahaz uh, was ruler of Judah. The capital of Judah was Jerusalem. King Rezin was ruler of Aram. We, we know Aram as Syria. Damascus was its capital. King Pekah was ruler of Israel, also referred to as Ephraim in the Hebrew scriptures. Samaria was the capital of Ephraim. Now you got your, I, you got, you got your parties right, okay? Ahaz, king of Judah. You've got Rezin, king of Syria, or Aram. And you've got Pekah, king of Israel. Well, Rezin and Pekah form an alliance because they want to deal with this rising superpower called Assyria. And they don't want Assyria to literally have dominance in the region. And they decide they want Ahaz in Judah to be part of their alliance. Ahaz doesn't want to do it. And so when he refuses to join the alliance, as Suzette read, Rezin and Pekah decide to invade Judah. They actually begin the invasion. And when they didn't have CNN back then, they didn't have drones that could give Ahaz instant knowledge that there was an invasion force breaking into his country. But when he got word in Jerusalem, you can imagine how scared he was. He had a predicament on his hand. Threatening powers were invading his world and he was afraid. His kingdom was frightened. And we learn at the first nine verses of seventh chapter how God sent Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, to meet Ahaz. And Isaiah took along his little boy. Uh, and directed by God to take along his son, uh, Shehazar, whose name in Hebrew means a remnant shall return. And the little boy and Isaiah go to the meeting with the king. And Isaiah 7, 4 shows that the message that Isaiah was supposed to deliver to Ahaz. Now, now listen, Ahaz, be, take, take notice of this. Be quiet, keep cool, don't, chill, don't get your heart rate up. Take a chill pill. Slow your roll. Um, don't let your heart be faint because of these two smoldering firebrands, these two hotheads. Because of the fierce anger of Rezin and, 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 and Pekah. And apparently in the passage, passage that we read together, Isaiah comes back another time because we read there that God directs Isaiah to go back and tell Ahaz, look, request a sign of my divine presence. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm with you. I'm telling you, I got your back. I'm telling you, you don't have anything to worry about. But I want you to, I want you to call on me for a sign. I, I'm going to give you some proof. 
Tell me what proof you want. As a matter of fact, ask a sign, whatever it is, I don't care if it's high as heaven or as low as the underworld, tell me what the sign is and I'll give it to you, God says. And Ahaz, in his super religious state, says, no, 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 I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to put the Lord to the test. So Isaiah tells the king, guess what? Just because you didn't ask doesn't mean God won't deliver. So God himself will give you a sign, and look, the sign is going to be a young woman who is now already pregnant, who is going to bring forth a son, and will name him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Now let me give you a little bit of, 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 of word study. Emmanuel does not mean God is with us. Emmanuel means God with us. Emmanuel means God with us. The promised child was a sign of God's saving presence to give Ahaz hope in the face of the threatened invasion, these threatening powers, this threatening predicament in his world. The young woman, in verse 14 of our passage, probably may have been Isaiah's wife, would bear a son, Apparently she was already pregnant and was going to name him Emmanuel. The Emmanuel was going to be a sign of God's saving presence. The threatened invasion would be put down by the time this promised boy would be old enough to tell the difference between good food that's good to eat and bad food is bad to eat. Now you understand something. There's a, there's a threatened invasion. And when there's a threatened invasion, unlike in our time when we're at war and everybody's going to the mall, when you are invaded, you begin to ration stuff. Stuff is scarce. And who is most vulnerable? Little babies. Because when you have a food shortage, children are the ones who are most at risk for going hungry. And so bad food is available. And so the promise is before this promised baby is old enough to know the difference between bad food and good food, the threat you're worried about will be done away with. But you understand Ahaz didn't want to see the sign. He didn't want the sign. Even after God ordered him to ask for one. Stick a point in that. Stick a ping in that. Do you know some people who are so religious they won't even ask for a sign of God's presence and saving power even when God promises to give it to them. They don't want a God with us sign because they, 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 I'm not going to test the Lord. Uh, and and they, they say, you know, you don't, they, they'll cite scripture to you. And Ahaz may have looked like he was being pious, but the truth of the matter is Ahaz was being Faithless. God had told him, listen, ask for the sign. Ahaz was being unfaithful by refusing to ask for the sign God told him to ask for. As a matter of fact, God gave him a blank check. He said, ask for any sign you want. Sometimes we don't get what God wants us to have because we are too religious to take what God is ready to give. God wanted to give Ahaz a God with us sign, and Ahaz was too religious to accept it. We can become so enthralled, we can become so captured by religious tradition that we fail to see God's saving presence, God dealing with us in new dimensions of fellowship, God breaking out in new ways. We can become so accustomed to dealing with and understanding God in certain familiar ways that we will object on religious grounds, mind you. When God shows up with a new kind of experience, a new kind of saving message, a new kind of saving method that's different from my experience, we can't believe God would dare do a new thing. You know, It's okay for Papa to get a brand new bag, but don't let God get one. How dare God show up different from the ways we've always thought God would show up? How dare God invite us to see God working in redemptive ways we don't understand? How dare God lead us down redemptive paths we haven't negotiated, haven't navigated, 
haven't traveled, especially if their paths we've always thought were wrong. How dare God turn our neat little worlds upside down? How dare God move our holy cheese? How dare God break the rules we understand about how we deal with God, how we deal with other people, how we deal with situations, how God is God. And so we have, like Ahaz, issues. We have issues when God shows up different from the way we have expected God to show up. You deal with some situations in your life. Where is God trying to show you signs that God has a saving presence and could it be that God is trying to show you signs and things and ways and people you haven't thought of, haven't gotten used to, might not have even thought God could use, but here God is trying to break it out and you say, no, I can't see that. I can't see where God is. I don't know what God is up to. Why didn't God do something? You know, God is trying to break out. You, you remember the story about the guy who was on the, in the flood and, 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 and Praying, Lord, please help me. Lord, please help me. And somebody comes by in a boat and says, come on down here. And I'm like, okay, take you in. Now, now I'm praying for the Lord to come help me. No, 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 no. No, and so go that way. And somebody comes by in a helicopter. Come, 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 here, come out. I'll pull you off the rooftop. No, no, I'm waiting for the Lord to help me. And the guy winds up going bubbly, bubbly, bubbly under the flood water. And in his afterlife, he said, God, why didn't you help me? He said, fool, I sent a boat <laughs> and a helicopter. <laughs> but because God doesn't show up in our little neat ways, we say God ain't working. I know that's bad, Grandma, but you got to deal with me right now. The point I'm trying to make is God is trustworthy. God is trustworthy even if we don't have enough faithfulness to believe that God can work outside of our little notions of religious tradition. God will make God's presence known in whatever ways God chooses, even if we don't believe God will do so. God invites us to see God's signs of, of God's presence and God's promises to deliver us even if we are so stubborn and so stuck on ourselves that we don't want to look where God is pointing. But God does not need our permission to deliver his signs. God does not need our permission to do God's thing because God doesn't need our permission to be God. You know, that's part of the thing about being God. You don't have to ask us for permission. The sign of God's saving presence is even more interesting when you look at this study from Isaiah. Look, we used to think of signs of saving presence as powerful, forceful image. And what does God do with Ahaz? He's, God says, look, the sign will be a young woman pregnant. Now you need to understand the, the, the significance of this. In scripture, women and babies were not the signs of deliverance. They were signs of vulnerability. <laughs> women in that culture were people who were protected and infants, unborn infants, we're helpless, and you give the sign of your deliverance to be a woman and an unborn child? You can imagine how Ahaz must have felt when he got that sign. I didn't want the sign in the first place. I don't know how much better I feel now. Notice that Ahaz didn't get details. He only got the outline of the promise. The promise only came in the name of the 
child will be born, God with us. And sometimes that's all God gives us. Sometimes God just gives us an outline, just a bare outline, a clue that God still has a saving presence in our lives, that God still is at work in our lives. And God said, you're going to have to trust the clue I give you. And then God says, trust that clue, even if it's not a clue you expected. So what does that have to do with it? Joseph, 700 years later. 700 years later, Joseph is in a predicament. You understand his fiancée, Mary, was pregnant. And Joseph hadn't been there and done it. Uh, and in that culture, in that culture, an engagement amounted to marriage. And so Mary's pregnancy amounted to adultery. According to the religious convention of that time, Joseph was entitled to a divorce. And according to the church folk, stay with me now. And according to the, to, to the scriptural church book, Joseph was entitled to a divorce. Publicly. A public divorce. He was entitled to call her out. But Joseph didn't want to do that with her. He wanted, I, 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 I'm trying to figure out how to do this. And Joseph had decided to do it quietly. In Matthew 1 20, we read, that just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Let me remind you of something. Verses 22 and 23 are not the angel's words. <coughs> What are those words? All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Those verses are Matthew's words. Matthew is interpreting for us that Joseph's dream relates back to Isaiah's conversation with Ahaz and saying, listen, this forest is bigger than the trees you're dealing with, Joseph. You're, you're, you're thinking about your pregnancy situation, but this is bigger than your situation. I am, God is doing something bigger than just dealing with Joseph and Mary. God is dealing with the world. God is doing a big new thing. Notice that Joseph didn't get a chance to request whether he wanted to sign. Now, God gave Ahaz a choice. <coughs> Do you want to sign? Joseph didn't get a choice. God provided the sign in Mary's pregnancy and challenged Joseph to embrace it. And the issue was whether Joseph could get over the fact that God was doing a new thing. God was doing something Joseph had never imagined. God was inviting Joseph to be part of what God was doing and saying, look, Joseph, here is my saving presence. Become part of it. Where's the good news for us? First of all, God wants to fill us. God wants to fill us. God wants to fill us with God with us power. God wants you and me to live with God with us power. We are so convinced that our situations are so overwhelming, that we are so overwhelmed by our threats, because you and I always have threatening situations, health threats, financial threats, social threats, job threats. There's always something trying to invade us. And God wants us to know that God has a saving presence for us that will give us the power to live with a sense of victory. And so God gives us a God with us presence. 
a God with us sense of God's power. God with us is true. Now, we like to say God is with us, but you need to understand the message is God with us. What's the difference? You understand God with us means we are not alone. That in our situations, there's a God with us power. There's a God with us reality. There is a God with us truth that cannot be trumped. No matter how low we fall, no matter how anxious we become, no matter how difficult it may be for us to believe or imagine, God with us is a divine promise. God has promised that God is not absent. God with us is our reality. Because of the God with us promise, we're never alone. We're not forsaken. We can hope because we know that the God with us truth. We can live with victory because of the God with us promise. We can look beyond our fears and anxieties and our mysteries, even the mysteries of God's promises, and sometimes cling, because sometimes that's all we can do, cling to the God with us truth. Notice that God with us is personal. Uh, we talk about the incarnation in Jesus Christ, but I think we need to remember that what that means is God shows up personally. God shows up in folk. Hello? I think we sometimes get so holy, we think God don't show up in stuff out there. But you know the reason we have this Bible? The Bible shows us that God is always showing up in folk. It's a subversive kind of show up, though. They're not the kind of folk we expect. We expect God to show up in great big chariots and powerful bank accounts. And God shows up in a young, unmarried, pregnant woman. God shows up in an unborn baby. God shows up in ways we don't expect. The subversiveness of this is so radical, we sometimes forget it, that God doesn't show up the way we expect. In Jesus, we see the personal embodiment of God with us because God with us is a personal truth. And this is something we need to remember. You and I have been called into a God with us kind of faith. It is a faith that we must embrace personally because God is personally invested in it. That's what the incarnation means, that God is personally invested in it. This is not some mystical, mythological thing where God is sitting up on Mount Olympus looking down and saying, I'm checking out what the folks are doing. No, God has personally invested in us. And that's what we have in Jesus. Why is that important? In Jesus, we now know that the God with us truth operates when our little boats are tossed by the storms of life. You understand? Jesus was in the boat on Galilee. He got messed up yeah. by the storm because that God with us presence is real when we are in life storms. In Jesus, we learn that God with us is true even when folks don't think that there's anything good to come out of our Nazareth. And all of us have some Nazareth stuff. All of us come from some kind of Nazareth places. And there's a God with us reality that operates out of our Nazareth places. In Jesus, we see that God with us is true when we've been left out, put out, or dropped out by the powers around us. When we are not good enough to show up at the high places, and we have been put out in low places, and we've dropped into worse places, God with us operates because Jesus shows up in all of those places that we put and dropped out of been put out of and been dropped into. And in Jesus we learn that the God with us truth operates even so well that death can separate us from God with us love. Even death can separate us from God with us hope. Even death cannot separate us from God with us peace. Lastly, we learn that we don't need to be afraid. Don't be afraid by the threats in your world. You understand? Joseph had a threat in his world. Joseph's world was threatened. 
by this pregnancy he hadn't expected. And Ahaz's world was threatened by this invasion he didn't want. And the message to Joseph and to Ahaz is saying, listen, don't be afraid. Mm. Instead, claim and proclaim that God with us spirit is alive and active and working in your life. What did the angel tell you, Joseph? Take Mary as your wife. So when Joseph woke up, what did he do? He changed his mind. He went to sleep thinking he was going to get rid of his lady privately. But when he woke up, he said, no, 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 no. I am going to marry this woman. I am going to live with this woman. I am going to claim this child. I am going to adopt this child. I am going to embrace the God with us truth. You know what the word Jesus means? Jesus is the Greek word for the word we read in the Hebrew Testament, Joshua. It means the Lord saves or the Lord helps. God with us saves. And Jesus is God with us. Jesus is saves with us. Jesus is God helps us. Jesus is God's personal assurance that we can embrace the God with us truth, even in our threatening situations. But the last point is, notice that the God with us message is delivered by folk like you and me. We keep looking for super saints. You know, folks with 50 dozen halos and 500 page Bibles in their pockets to show up. And we keep looking, but the Bible we have shows us that the God with us truth shows up in folk we don't think of as special. Who heard of Joseph before Matthew 1? Take Joseph out of the Bible and nobody knows who Joseph is. But because of the God with us presence, Joseph is known, but why is Joseph known? Because of the unknown, subversive, unmarried woman named Mary. Who ever heard of Mary? Ah, the God with us truth is personal. Which means that you and I are called to be agents of the God with us truth. You and I are agents of the incarnation. The incarnation is not just something we believe. The incarnation is something we must live. Because God with us is true. This is our faith. This is our hope. This is our victory. When all of the threatening situations come into our little worlds. And this is what God has called us to claim and say joy to the world. God with us is true.